Welcome to our devotional study today. We are at the tail end of Genesis chapter 20 where an old sin in the life of Abraham creeps up once again and we need to be aware of that because just when we think that we have victory over a certain thing, if we're not careful, it will creep back in and it will manifest itself in our lives and we need to be abundantly careful about that. And Abraham did not do that in this chapter in his um, relationship with Abimelech. And he practiced deceit and lying, which is not right. And that deceit and that lying was used to accomplish his own selfish means and his own selfish end. And uh, that also is not right. And there are many who seek to do that today uh, as well. And it still is not right today. So we're going to see how Abimelech responds to Abraham's reasoning. In verses 14 through 18, it says, Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah, notice this, his wife. Not his sister, his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleaseth thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother, here's a little bit of a dig, I've given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all other. Thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children, for the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. So as we come into this, we saw yesterday how Abraham gave some lame excuses as to why he did what he did. And by the way, friends, when we sin and we try to cover it up, any excuse is a lame excuse. Any reasoning is bad reasoning when it comes to trying to cover and mask sin and make it look like something that it is not. Then in verses 14 through 16, as we read these verses today, we find Abimelech's threefold reaction to Abraham and to Sarah. First of all, he gives a huge gift to Abraham, uh, similar to a dowry, uh, as he returns Sarah to her husband. And surely this would be classed as returning good for evil because Abraham had done evil to him. And now as Abimelech returns Sarah, Abraham's wife, he also gives Abraham this, this dowry, so to speak, these gifts. Uh, these gifts from Abimelech to Abraham were Abimelech's way of saying that he was wrong in taking Sarah. Yes, he was innocent in that he did not know that Sarah was Abraham's wife. He was innocent in that Abraham and Sarah both lied to him. But it was still wrong for a man to have another man's wife. So Abimelech here was acknowledging the fact and bending over backwards to make it right. Uh, you know, it's a shameful thing that a man of the world, a man who does not know God, a man who does not worship the true God, was acting way better in this passage than God's man. And it's a sad situation where when people in the world have a better reputation than the people who belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, th and brethren, that ought not to be. People in the world ought not to have a better testimony, a better reputation than you have as a child of God. But that's exactly what's happening here. Abraham has practiced deceit. He has lied and he has tried to cover it up. And here Abimelech is literally bending over backwards to seek to make what he has done, this wrong that he has done, to seek to make it right. And in doing so, he's reproving Abraham. He's challenging Abraham. Can you imagine the rebuke this must have been to Abraham as Abraham watches Abimelech doing all that he can do to make it right? Friends, singers need to be reproved. People say, oh, you know, that's not loving to reprove singing all that. Failure to reprove singing only encourages people to continue to do the evil. Sin must be reproved. Yes, we can do it in a loving way. Yes, we can do it in a caring way. But sin needs to be reproved. It needs to be rebuked, not excused. And Abraham in this passage is seeking to excuse his sin. And Abimelech, a man who is not even a child of God, rebu rebukes him and reproves him because of the sin 
that's in his life. Then go in verse six, in verse 14, he very clearly called uh, Sarah Abraham's wife. And then he does this, he calls Abraham her brother in verse 16, and thus paid him damages for any esteem and respect that was lost by Sarah. You know, personally, I can't see how Sarah did not lose respect for Abraham through this decision. Yes, she submitted to her husband. I'm not suggesting that was right either in this situation when it was contrary to what God says and disobedient to the word of God, but she did submit to her husband. But how could she be involved in doing this and telling this lie and putting herself in the situation that she put herself in and not lose respect for Abraham, her husband, not lose esteem for Abraham, her husband, Now, as we look at this in verse 15, we see that Abimelech gives Abraham permission to dwell in any part of the land. He is certainly most gracious to Abraham and kind to Abraham, even after the, the misdemer, the, even after the wickedness that God, that Abraham has done to him. And as a result of that, the judgment of God that they have faced, they continue to be kind to this servant of God, even though he does not deserve it. Then in verses 17 and 18, we see the healing that was brought to Abimelech in his household and his nation by God. It says, so Abraham prayed unto God and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants and they bare children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. There was a healing here that was brought about by God. You see, let me remind you once again today that Abraham's sin of deceit had brought peril to a great many of innocent Philistine people. As I said yesterday, you do not sin in a fishbowl. One of the lies that Satan tells is it will only affect you if it affects anybody. Friends, that is not the case, and this is evidence of it here. Our sin affects others. Our sin puts other in, others in harm's way. Listen to what Paul said to the Roman believers in Romans chapter 14. And in verse 7, we find these words. It says, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. But none of us, friends, none of us live to himself, None of us die to himself. None of us are an island to ourselves. Um, what we do affects people around us. Therefore, let's be careful that our conduct would be holy at all times and that we would not do things that would put others in the way of the judgment and the peril that comes from God. The healing comes and it is an answer to Abraham's prayer. Surely it's the grace of God that God would hear the prayer of this offender, that God would hear the prayer of Abraham. But think also about how humbling this must have been for Abraham to pray this prayer, to acknowledge his sin before Abimelech and before God. He had to pray for the healing of the people whose sickness was caused by his poor conduct, by his sin, by his lack of trust in God. But to Abraham's credit, he did pray, and God caused Abimelech and his family to be fruitful. Friends, it's important for us to understand as we close our study today that God has some moral standards for mankind, that God has an even higher level of standards for his people. And if those standards are, re are ignored, and we see this in the society that we live in, various and often severe physical illnesses plague the guilty. Now, I'm not saying if somebody's sick, that it's because they've sinned. But how much sin is there in this world? How much disease is there in this world because of the fact that man has sinned against God and gone, gone his own wicked way regardless of the consequences that it brings to them? Keith Brooks had this to say about this chapter and about sin. He said, sin has many tools but the handle, but a lie is a handle that fits them all. If the truth is stretched, expect it 
eventually to fly back and to sting you. What a powerful truth to think about as we conclude our study on Genesis chapter 20. Have a great day.